It's time for Did You Watch It? How does this show work? We watch what we like, we talk about what we watch, and maybe you'll like what you hear. I'm Liz. And I'm Neil. Last night, we watched the Women Tell All episode of The Bachelor Season 18. The show aired on Monday, March 3rd, 2014. Here's what we thought about it. This was quite a fiery women tell all. Really? Yeah, this was the most fiery I think I've ever seen. Really? Yes. That's very interesting. Yeah, totally. Because you know Cammy. Yes. My bachelor contact at work. Yes, who I'm trying not to be jealous of. Well, okay. <laughs> She said that this was one of the more sedate ones that she had seen. Well, it was sedate in one sense, but not in the other. Meaning, this was the first time everybody was so negative about The Bachelor. So from that perspective, to me, it was fiery. Because that's something we've never really seen. But for her, sedate, yeah, I can see that because they weren't bickering with each other as much. It was all focused on Juan Pablo. She did say that. Let's call a duck a duck. Not everybody was negative. Okay. I'm just saying, most had a very strong opinion about Juan Pablo. Strong opinions, I will go with. Yes. I will go with. Not all of them were strong negative opinions, though. No. I stand corrected, and you're right. They weren't all... No, 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 that's okay, because... (laughs) Because trust me, I was up at 7.15 this morning watching this show. Are you serious? I am very serious because I didn't want to have to go through a whole day of work and then come home and have to deal with this. Really? (laughs) So I figure, let me get it out of the way as early as possible. Sort of like ripping a band-aid off. There are times when I am truly, truly glad that I am streaming instead of paying an exorbitant cable bill. (laughs) Really? To be exposed to things such as The Bachelor. Well, okay. The biggest benefit that I can honestly say that I experienced today was the fact that because I was streaming, it was only an hour long. (laughs) Oh, thank you. You are super excited. (laughs) It touched my heart. I I shed a tear because I didn't have to go the full pull. I know. As it were. Well, hey, we're in the home stretch now. So, my friend, you have made it through this season like a trooper. Hey, it ain't done yet. I want to give you props because I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, and I got to tell you, I am too. Okay. The first segment was Sean and Catherine, and the only reason that I can even see bringing these people up, it's like, hey, we got one that worked. No, don't say that. We've talked about that. There's more than one, and Sean and Catherine are really cute, and they just got married, and I love them, so don't bag on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I know is in Bachelor headquarters, they're saying, the dream is alive. Anyway. There are more success stories than just Sean and Catherine, which we've already discussed in previous episodes. Yeah. Speaking of success stories. Yes. How was the wedding night? (laughs) Really? (laughs) Well, you and I talked about it in one of the first episodes when we were discussing Sean and Catherine and his whole religious stance and the fact that he's a virgin and this was going to be his first time. And Which is absolutely more information than I ever needed. <laughs> well, it's more information than anybody needed to know. But poor guy, once somebody said it, it was just over and over and over again. Come on. Somebody wants to know the play-by-play about your wedding night? Which almost was a one-shot wonder in more ways than one. <laughs> Be kind. Thanks to that stingray. <laughs> said it grabbed a hold of him I was dying I can just see him at the aquarium or wherever the hell they were (laughs) and you know they're saying you know okay point on the doll where the stingray bit you (laughs) to me the only good part about this segment is that it actually took away time from the crazies (laughs) 
Wow. Okay, you are more jaded with each episode. I thought it was getting better. I thought you was making a fan out of you in some no! small way. Where did you even get that idea? You Trust me. You were getting kind of this... hyped up about it and getting kind of into it. No, no, it's not hyped up. It's angry. <laughs> Oh, poor deal. And to add insult to injury, yeah. we then had an appearance by Kermit and Miss Piggy. Oh, okay. Look, I'm a huge Muppet fan, but that was just lame. That was cheese. Limburger. That <laughs> you know, was. that was it was bad. It was it bad. It was. And I don't know what's happening this season, but there were just so many promos about different things. Like I couldn't decide from one week to the next what advertising they were focusing on because it was all over the place. We talked about this last night when we were doing Amazing Race. It's like money's not come by these days. They gotta get their sponsors. Gotta get the revenue any way you can. So now, does this actually qualify as the crazy strike back? Or the return of the crazies, or the <laughs> phantom crazies. It's a little bit of both. It's a little revenge, a little strike back, a little let me throw you under the bus, a little oh, let me get this off my chest. It's all of the above. Yeah. So, in attendance, we had Lauren H., our favorite mineral coordinator from <laughs> yes. Edmond, Oklahoma. We had Kylie, Danielle, Elise, Ali, Victoria, sober, thankfully. Sober, Victoria, thank goodness. We had Sh- Sh- Chantel. <laughs> we had Christy, Lauren S., everybody's favorite crazy Lucy. Lucy, oh my gosh. Cassandra, Chelsea, Kat, Kelly, and of course Molly. Yes. Charlene, Renee, and we round the gaggle. With, with your favorite. Did you just say gaggle? I said gaggle. Neil! I said gaggle. That's sort of derogatory. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It is a collective noun. <laughs> and one of the things that just hit me at the very beginning, it was so funny how the thing that eventually annoyed them the most was the thing that they were so attracted to at first. His accent. The accent, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's like when he was saying, it's okay, oh my God, I just can't be- <laughs> But that goes to show, okay, I don't want to make this comment because it'll tell everybody just how jaded I am. But isn't yeah. that what happens? The things that you find so enchanting in the first few weeks end up the things that drive you drive crazy, you crazy. two, yeah. three years later. Even Andy was quoted as saying, he's so calming. <laughs> comforting <laughs> and enchanting yeah i know when she said enchanting i thought oh lord thank god the cameras yeah. aren't around when all of us are talking yeah, about this is our the exes. same woman who said <laughs> if you say the word okay one more time i'm gonna kill myself <laughs> any observations before i go on <laughs> The criticism was pretty much the same. Everybody was saying there wasn't a lot of conversation, which you and I have talked about anyway in our shows. How do you get to know somebody? Exactly. 27 women. He's got 27 women. How deep can you really go? But here's the thing. Because you haven't seen the other seasons, you don't know how the other bachelors approach their dating relationships with these women. When I tell you that he is the first bachelor that has just really seemed not into it. I mean that sincerely because everybody else would ask questions. There would be conversation. They would show the dialogue between the two of them and the things that they would talk about. But on this season, you're seeing them narrate their own dates rather than hearing the conversation that they're having during the date. Okay. To a large extent, maybe this was underemphasized, maybe this was underplayed. All I know is when he goes home or after everything's over, whoever he brings in, they've got to deal with uh, baby mama, you know. Oh, of and course they do. Whatever this woman has, it made him leave professional soccer. Wow. Whether it was his sense of responsibility over his daughter or whether it was Carla basically saying, I need something a little bit more in order to help raise his child or whatever. I don't know. Oh, you mean in terms of financial security? Yeah. Or at the very least, just emotional support because she wasn't traveling so much. Exactly. 
So I'm not saying that this was all Carla. You know, I'm also giving him a little bit of credit in the decision that he made. Because on some level, whether it was him himself, whether it was him with his family, he came to the decision that he needed to play the paternal role. Yeah. That's cool. But if he's going on the show and he's not jumping up and down expecting to leave with Miss Wright or Miss Wright now or Miss maybe I'll call you in a couple weeks, (laughs) you know, type of thing. The only thing I know for sure is that the relationship that involves shared custody yeah. is a day-to-day challenge. Of course. I mean, okay. that's not anything that's going to go away. Yeah, and just for the record, it's not anything that I have contributed to. I have just experienced it in the relationships that I have had in the past. Yeah. Because I Me personally too. have no children, but I have been involved with women that did have children. Me too. Well, not yeah. women, well, women, but men. Right. No, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll hang out with you anyway. <laughs> I think the smackdown of the night was aimed at Lauren S. when she said that Juan Pablo wasn't genuine. Okay. If we recall, Lauren S. was the one that rode in on the piano bike. And she was also the one that was begging for the kiss and got swatted down. Oh, don't remind me. That was so sad. I just felt so bad for her. Yeah, it was so sad. It was so pathetic. But you know, (laughs) Kelly had to do a complete 180 for calling her bitter ass out. And it's like, hey, 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 that's not what I heard when you were in the house. Hey, if you want to talk about Flippy Floppy, I have to give Andy credit because I guess Andy calmed down. Yes. Andy had a talk with Hi. Andy did something happen with Andy. It's probably a couple of months. A couple months? Don't douse that fire. <laughs> I'm sure that she had a, a nice little sit down with Hi or with, you know, Well, you know Hi set her straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because she... As only Hi can. One of the first things that came out of her mouth were the first words that she uttered that I have like completely agreed with okay. in a very, very long time. Based on her assessment, she said Juan Pablo was looking for somebody that he could develop a relationship with. Yeah. While most of the women that had come on the show were actively seeking a husband. Yeah. And that's the premise of the show. All of the past seasons, the bachelors talk about that. The bachelorettes talk about that. They're there to find love. They're there to find a partner. They're there to find a husband or a wife. That's Uh talked about from day one. And we really haven't heard Juan Pablo say that a lot. Exactly, because bringing a wife into the situation that he's in... She's got to be the right woman. Yeah, it's going to take more than this the time of this show to make that determination. Yeah, it's going to take more than ABC and the trips to the squeeze and, <laughs> you know, the water boats. Our favorite You know, part, the water cars. The squeeze. And, and yeah, you know, it's going to take a whole hell of a lot more than that. Yeah. Once you get enough distance from the immediate reaction and you start to look at the whole picture it's a lot easier to really understand at least part of the way where Juan Pablo is coming from you may not like everything he does and I don't necessarily agree with some of the things that he did on the show yeah what did you think about the way that he was speaking tonight were you on board with that did you feel like he you know did you get a sense The first thing that came out of his mouth when Chris Harrison had asked him about if there was anything that he would have done differently or if he had any... Oh, when he said, did he have any regrets? And the fact that he said no, yeah, that one kind of like... There's no way anyone would have said, no, I have no regrets. I can only think of one incident that he absolutely positively should regret. And what was that? His reaction to Claire after the swim. Yeah, that's true. That he should have owned up to, and he had the opportunity to do it, and he didn't. That's on him. Yeah. But, once again, if I look at the big picture, this is not somebody that I would go out drinking with or be social with or want to hang out with. It would take me three E's okay, and I'd have to go home. (laughs) So you're saying you're bothered by the E's okay, too. I'm not bothered by the it's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying that I would pull a muscle not wanting to imitate it. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't want to necessarily piss him off by doing so. Exactly. Right. I, I so hear that's, you. What, that's why I'd have to bounce. 
Why is kissing still a discussion topic after 18 seasons? Because they explained that to you in the actual no, they women. They did not. T- they yes, did they not did. explain it to me yes. in a manner which makes sense. Well, did you not hear? And for the life of me, I can't remember who it was was saying we all just want to feel special, right? She was saying we know that we're there with 27 other women, but when you look at your time with Juan Pablo and you look at your relationship with him, everybody wants to feel like that's a special one-on-one thing with them. That's the whole premise is you go into it feeling like that's what's going to happen. So I will ask you the question, is this the first time in the 18 seasons of the women tell all, where the women have complained that the excessive amount of kissing made them not feel special. No. I mean, they so always complain about that. So they have been watching that. the show. <laughs> See, they didn't do their research. <laughs> They've been okay? watching the show, but they haven't been in the show until now. I want to thank Chris Harrison for reminding that you have to be very careful when you accuse someone of using their child as an excuse. Yeah. That was wrong. When you're in a shared custody situation, the math doesn't always work out the way you want it to. Yeah. The person who's coming into that arrangement needs to exercise a little bit of understanding, needs to exercise a little bit of patience, needs to understand that there's still a relationship going on between the two biological parents. Yeah. And that will never end. It will always be a part of your relationship. Exactly. And that's something that you have to be prepared for when you're going into one of these situations. Cat whining and crying about the fact that it's like, well, I just didn't understand about why he called them his special ones. Oh, Cat was not happy about that. I don't care, okay? <laughs> All it just means is that she doesn't understand what it meant. Yeah. And it was so bad that thing was Andy that had to clean it up at the end. Yeah. Says, yeah, special, but not preferential. Yeah. I gotta say, I understood from Kat's perspective where she was coming from, because as a non-mother, when the people who are mothers are being called special, I would imagine how that would make her feel less than. But key is make her feel less than. Exactly. Not that that was his intention. Right. That's how it ended up coming across. Yeah. He had a level of identification with Cassandra and Renee. Yeah. That the others didn't understand. Now, I know that Juan Pablo referred to Cassandra and Renee as his special ones because yeah. they were the only single moms on the show. Yeah. But even within the special ones, there was a difference between Cassandra and Renee. There was. And not just because of how he felt about them and the obvious age difference, because there's 11 years between these two. That's a long time. Renee's son is eight. Yeah. And old enough to be watching the show once it hits the air. Yes. If I remember correctly, Cassandra's son is two. Yeah. Really little. Two or three. So he's not going to be affected by the man who's kissing mommy one minute, kissing this other lady. So Charlene was the first lady Lady. in the hot seat. She was. Okay. And it was hot. She still got Lil Jones for Juan Pablo. She does. And I just don't get that. No, I do. I don't because her whole demeanor on the show was that she really wasn't into it. Yes. On the show, while the show was airing, yes, she gave this appearance that she was just going off in all directions. And we've said it. Yeah. That we just didn't understand what her problem was. And she cleared some of that up tonight. Yes, yeah, she did. By saying, yeah, did. you know, when you're in it, you have all those feelings. You go back and forth and you start exactly. analyzing everything. So I, I got it from that perspective. But to be this much later in the game and for to still feel like she's carrying a torch or seem like she's carrying a torch, it was just kind of weird. But there is one thing I will say that I respected yes. her for. And that was when she sort of defended him. Yes. I was surprised by that, but I was was pleasantly surprised by that. Yes. Because she wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. Right. How when they would talk, he was always inquisitive. He would ask about her life in Germany. How does it feel to just pick yourself up and and move yourself to a completely different culture, a completely different environment? Mm -hmm. It just kind of reinforced, as I've said for weeks, if he's not digging in to find out who you are, he's just not that into you. Yeah. 
She came in looking for somebody who was her intellectual equal or superior. Yes. It wasn't Juan Pablo, but she was still warm for his form anyway. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you just say warm for his form? Yes, I no, did. No, you did not. I got a million Neil. of these. Okay. Oh, that is terrible. I'm cringing. I got a million of these, okay? With every fiber of my being. Stop it. So then Renee got the hot seat. We love Renee. And she looked beautiful tonight. Yes, she did. I know she loved him. And I know she thinks that he didn't. Yeah. I don't believe that. I don't believe it either. What I do believe is that he didn't love her enough. Yeah. To keep her there, given all of the distractions. Yeah. No, I 100% agree with you. Because it was obvious that there was something between them. Yeah. You know, all through the whole thing, we saw it. And then yeah. at the end, he just decided he couldn't go through with it. What yeah. did you think about what Cassandra said about he shouldn't have taken her on the hometown dates? I called bullshit. Really? Yeah. I did not agree with that statement at all. He was shocked by it. Did you see the look on his face? Because it was a stupid statement. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, it was a stupid statement. Okay. When he was introduced to Ben, he was introduced as a friend. Yeah. Period and descent. This is not the man that's going to be your new daddy. This is not yeah. your uncle. This is a friend of mine with a lot of cameras. <laughs> yeah. Let's not forget the cameras. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm telling you, that was the big thing that Ben had a problem with was uh, why are all these people in my room? <laughs> I know, poor Ben. Yeah. He looked petrified. Yeah. It's like, why are all these cameras on me? I don't want to be on I TV. Know. Don't tuck me in in front of everybody. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm a big boy. I don't need to be tucked in. Poor I go ben. to bed by myself. The scenario that was playing in my head when she was having this conversation. What would happen if the final four, if that was the last round or the last selection? The fi of the four that were on the hometown of dates? The four that were on the hometown dates. If he had to pick one, and then that would be it, that would be the end of the show, I think he would pick Renee. You know what? I think you're right. I think you would I have too. I can see him enjoying the exploration of what was possible with Renee. With the family and the whole bit. And family is really important to her. It's really important to him. Exactly. They have kind of those same values. Yeah. I'm not taking anything away from the other three, but with Renee, it was always different. It was different from day one. Yeah. It was. It was deeper. It was just, yeah, it was at a different level. Charlene may have been mundo, but Renee was querida. So then Andy was in the hot seat. And you could tell she's an assistant district attorney from this little segment of yeah. the show. Talk about a polished closing argument. Let her tell the story. Juan Pablo was talking to himself. All he did was he talked about himself. And he said that I barely made it to the suites. And what did she say? See, I'm thinking, especially based on that conversation that they had last week, I'm thinking that this was a cross-examination that didn't go quite the way that she planned. Oh, I see what last you're saying. Last week, she said her piece. She said, I'm out of here. Juan Pablo gave his response. I understand. I respect you. It's okay. Well, it just can't be okay. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about the whole it's okay discussion tonight, though? I'm sorry, but it totally cracked okay, me up. Yeah, it was funny. I love the fact that they could and make fun exactly of it. That's exactly what they needed to do. Okay, because yeah. otherwise it would make Andy seem like absolutely bug nuts. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying, it's it's difficult for me to picture a conversation where just out of the blue, spontaneous, without provocation, he just comes out and says, oh, by the way, you just barely made it here. Then Juan Pablo came out, let the battle ensue. Oh my gosh, the tension was so, you could just cut it with a knife. Yeah. Yeah. He looked so uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I kind of understand his posture, why he didn't express regret over anything. Because he felt like he was in front of the firing squad. And it's like, hey, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down standing. <laughs> 
You know, can I just say, I am really going to miss your fake Juan Pablo accent. Well, there you go. There you go. You're I'm just, just going to have to call me up at some point and just do that I'm for me over the phone. I'm just channeling my parents. I'm <sighs> keeping it home. To going I back just, to old school. So I'm going to miss it yeah. really bad. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll change my voicemail message. And then you can call me up and you can listen to me say, leave a message at the ring. Ooh, that would be delightful. Yes, yes. Thank All right. you. Sorry, I'm not here right now, but it's okay. When Grenade suggested that he act compassionate toward everyone else. She was just a raw nerve ending. She only spoke for 20 seconds, but the emotion on her face and through her body, it was palpable. And you know what's even funnier? I didn't even say her name. And you knew you didn't exactly have to. You knew exactly who I was talking about. Oh my gosh, her cheeks were quivering. Oh god. <laughs> felt so bad. I'm like, somebody please help this girl. Finally, I'm also glad that they dealt with the elephant in the room. Which was? Which was the GQ article. Oh, yeah. I'm glad they dealt with that, too. Props to Kelly for speaking out. I read out. in one of the periodicals or one of the so forth that her father's gay. And yeah. so, obviously, this is an issue that hit very deeply with her. Yeah, and, and she I was totally starting understand. to cry. Yeah. You could and, see it. No, she wasn't starting. She was crying. Props to yeah. Mundo for protecting her man. Which brings me to my next thing, which I was so shocked there was no Bachelorette announcement tonight. Because usually that's a part of the women tell all is they sort of announce who the next Bachelorette they is. They normally announce who the next Bachelorette is, but they didn't announce. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Andy got the time off. And there was a little weird something something between her and Chris Harrison tonight that led me to believe that she might in fact be the next Bachelorette. When he was talking talking about do you still believe in love and blah 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 and yeah, she was yeah, yeah. kind of embellishing on that I thought oh that's kind of a setup I am ready for the finale I was ready for the finale after the first week I know you were and I still think he doesn't pick either of them I don't think he picks either of them either that's our time for today. You can follow us on Twitter at did the letter U watch it. You can also find us at iTunes. Let us know what you think. Thank you for listening.